Hello, I'm Greg Priest with Priest Tools. This video will cover the installation of the Priest Tools power drawbar on the Precision Matthews PM25 and PM30 mills. The first step in the process is to unpack all of the components and use the attached checklist to make sure that you received all the parts. The following tools are required to install the power drawbar. The next step is to prepare the mill for installation of the power drawbar. This mill has already been prepared and set up and ready for the installation. The next step in the process is to install the support plate. The next step in the process is to install the fittings in the pneumatic valve. Now install the wiring harness and junction box on the support plate. Connect the pneumatic valve to the support plate using the supplied 440 by one and eighth inch machine screws. The next step is to install the drawbar and Belleville washer stack into the mill. Follow the steps in the installation guide for lubricating the Belleville spring washers and drawbar and flange with anti-seize. Take the pallet supplied with the power drawbar and put it up into the spindle and tighten the drawbar, not even finger tight. Take the three inch washer and the flange supplied with the power drawbar, the flange up through the washer, put the flange into the R8 pallet and continue to tighten until it's finger tight. Take the spindle wrench and the binder clip and mount the spindle wrench onto the flats of the spindle and clip it there with the binder clip. Rotate the spindle back, slide the spindle wrench extension onto the handle of the spindle wrench and rotate the spindle so that the extension is resting against the column of the mill. Make a mark on the drawbar head. This will let you know the starting point for tightening the drawbar and the Belleville washer stack. Tighten the drawbar in one sixth increments. So we've tightened the drawbar and compressed the Belleville stack, thereby putting tension on the collet holding the tool. At this point, with one revolution of the drawbar, we're now gonna assemble the rest of the system to check the function of the power drawbar. Place the spacers over the mounting holes on the support plate. Check the owner's manual for the support plate legend that shows the correct mounting holes for this mill. Take the cylinder assembly and cylinder plate with the socket head gap screws attached and place it over the top of the drawbar. Take the shoulder screws, slide one of the shoulder screws down through the bearing on the cylinder plate, through the spacer and thread into the mounting hole on the support plate. Take the other shoulder screw and slide it through the front clearance hole, down through the spacer and into the mounting hole on the support plate. Tighten the shoulder screws. The chip card switch and enclosure need to be removed so that those wires can be connected to the power drawbar wire harness as a safety feature to cut power to the motor when the power drawbar is engaged. So with the cover off of the headstock, these two wires with the yellow sleeves are normally sitting right here. So fish those wires back to the rear of the headstock and then down below the headstock and connect to the two male insulated wires on the wiring harness. The power drawbar comes with two segments of raceway and two segments of magnetic tape that can be applied to the back of the raceway. This is for wire management. Connect the pneumatic valve to the air compressed air supply. Make sure the air hose is seated firmly. Install the push to connect tubing 
into the pneumatic valve connections. Install the limit switch onto the cylinder plate with the lever of the limit switch facing forward using the two 440 thumb screws included with the power draw bar. Install the actuator plate into the dovetail slot on the cylinder plate. To operate the power draw bar, lift the spring plunger, slide the plate back, re-engage the spring plunger until it clicks into place. The contact switch cuts power to the mill and the power draw bar is now ready to be used.